Hello guys, this is Navin Reddy. Today we'll talk about something called as multi-threading, which is one of the amazing topic in Java. In fact, uh, this is the co this concept lies in C sharp. We have lots of languages which supports threads. Now, so let's see how to work with threads in Java. Now, demonstrate the to demonstrate thread, let's go with the example. Let's say we have a class called as A, and then we have a class called as B. We have two classes, and both these classes will have a same method called as public void show. And one will print, we'll say, out, we'll say, this show will print high. And let me just copy with this code here. And this code hell, uh, show will print, let's say, hello. So now we have a function of a method called as show in A class which prints hi and we have a show method in B class which show which prints hello. Now what I want to do, I want to call this method. That means I have to create an object, right? So let's call I want to call this show of A. So I say A obj equal to new A. I'm creating an object of A now. And then I can say uh, obj dot show, right? By this I will call uh, hi. Or I will print high. Let's say I want to create object of B now. So we'll say B obj1 and new B. Now I will say obj1 dot show. Now it will print hello. So if I if I run this code, obviously I'll be getting high and hello, right? But let's say I want to print, I want to print this high five times. I want to print this hello five times. Again, how to uh, print this high five times? What you can do is you can just type this statements five times. So we'll use We'll, we'll do this, right? Because we can we can print this high five times, but there's no logical way of do, doing this. If you print anything for five times, we can use a loop, right? So we say int i equal to we say one and i less than equal to five and i plus plus, and then I will say it's out. Okay, I will use the same code, which is copy and we'll use this code here. Instead of high, we have to print hello. Now, now if I run this code, right? Let, let's let's say what what happens when I run this code. If I say obj dot show, your pointer your pointer will move from here to here. Directly it will jump from this location to this location, right? And then it will execute this statement. Now if I execute this statement five times, loop will get over this method will get over again. Your pointer will go back to this method or this statement, and then it will call this show. That means this show will execute after after the uh, successive completion of this show, right? And that's why you will get output as five times high, and then you will get five times hello, right? This one, five times hello. If I run this code now, obviously the output will be five times high and five times hello. But what, what I want now, I want my output to look something in this way. Let's say we have a notepad. Output should be something in in this way. So first should print hi, and then should print hello, then it should print hi, and then it should print hello. May not be the same sequence, but it should work parallelly. What I mean by that is, while your code is executing this show, at the same time it will start executing this point, this start, this show, right? Now to, to work with this, what I need is there should be some process, some sub process which will work with this this show. And there, there should be some process, sub process, which should work with this show. That means I have to break my code into two parts or execution into two parts. One will call this show, one will call this show. Now, now let's say uh, when you want to work with this thing, there's a concept of threads. What you can do is you can create multiple threads, and one, one thread will execute show, and second thread will execute this show. That means if you want to work with something, you require threads. And by default, in Java, when you have, when you work with this main function, by default you are working with one thread. To prove that point, let me do this. Ex uh, let me work this example. Let's say we have this int variable which is uh, d zero, and then we have a variable let's say i, and I will say five divided by d. Obviously, this when I execute this statement, it will throw an error. It because d is zero. And you cannot divide a number by zero. It will give you some arithmetic uh, exception. But still, let, let's run this. If you run this code now, 
Uh, of course, you will get an error which is arithmetic exception, also called as divided by zero. So the main problem for this, uh, uh, the main thing is uh, the error was in main function or main th uh, main method, but they have written something in this way: exception in thread main, which means by default your main is uh, uh, by default you have one thread in Java, which is your main thread. That means whenever you write an application for desktop, that means which works with JVM, you have to use a main thread. That means what we are doing here is we are we have a method or thread which is means. So we have a main thread here. And what I want now, this main thread will execute in this way. I'm very bad with the guys. I want this main to be continuing this way. But with this continuation, I want two more execution. One will execute this one and one will execute this one. This here, this, this thread here should print hi five times. And this thread here should print hello five times, which means I have to create two threads with main thread, except, except main thread, I have to create two more threads. One will one is responsible to print hi and second will be responsible to print hello. Now question arises how to do that. Let's go back to our code. Now the steps to do that is convert your normal POJO class. This is your A is your POJO class. Convert this normal POJO class into threads. How to do that? Just extend your class with thread class. So in Java, we have this class called a thread. Okay. And then here we'll say again extends. This should be thread. So now we have class A which extends thread and we have class B which extends threads. Now, now when you want to work with this class called a thread, you have to, or uh, it's not compulsory, but it's uh, if you want to work with threads, if you want their true power, you have to override a method called as run. So run is a default run is a method of thread. Uh, so you have to override that method. Again, we can use annotations here because we are we are overriding. Again, how to use annotation? We can simply say uh, override just to prove that yes, it's overriding, right? There is no error. So that means again we can use annotations, our choice to make it more to make the code or to keep the code simple. I'm not using override annotation here. Now uh, now what I will do is instead of calling show from main function, I will call this show from run method. That means instead of calling show here, I'm calling run. So what I can do, I can just simply say obj.run. But what I want, I want to create a new thread, which means instead of main, it should start with a new thread. And when you call run, it will use the same main thread. What I want, I want to create a new thread, right? So instead of run, I have to say start. Now start is a uh, start is delegated to call this uh, run method, right? So indirectly, the start will call run and run will call show. Again, uh, we can use this code or we can just cu cut this code and paste it here. That will also work. But since we, I, I've talked about, I, mean, I want to use a method called a show. That's why we are going with this, this example. The same thing you have to do for this class thread. That means I have to use the same function, or same method here also. Again, same thing. Is if you are calling, if you are calling here start, it should be start here also. And I don't want this statement here. Simple, right? So we have two threads. One is A thread, second is B thread, and we are calling a method called a start. Now the uh, output we are expecting now it should be something in this way: hi, hello, hi, hello. But let's say if I run this code. The output I'll be getting, oh, it's again same. That means the code is not proper. Okay, let me try it again. Oh, the code is not proper. Let me try it again. How? Oh, that means something. Something is wrong. That means it's it's working in parallel, right? You can see we have printed hi, and then it will jump to hello. Again, it's printing five times. That means our thread. We have created two threads. It's working, but not in a proper way. It's because your CPU is damn fast. Your CPU works in picoseconds. What we are expecting, once it, is, once it prints hi, the CPU should print hello. But the problem is, your CPU is so fast, 
once it get the command that's for loop it will use its code cache and it will execute the for loop continuously now to pr prove my point let me just increase this uh, counter from 5 to uh, maybe 100 so let's say it's instead of 5 let's say it is 100 now you can see So you can see hundreds of hello is getting printed simultaneously. That means it is using a code cache. Now question arise, how to stop it or how to make your CPU wait for some time? Now, if you want to wait, if you want to make it wait, you have to use a method called as sleep. Now sleep is a static method in Java, which belongs to a class called as thread. So we have to use a thread or sleep. We have to give a semicolon. Now, this thread dot sleep will expect a long integer. That means we have to specify some amount of time, maybe in minutes, maybe in seconds or milliseconds. But basically, the sleep method will always expect milliseconds. So that means if I specify 100 or 1000, it means it's one second. Again, let's go back to 5 so that we can just see what's going on. So let's, let's make it 5. And now, now there are some applications which will which will not allow you to make your system sleep. Some some mission critical applications will not allow you to uh, sleep your machine. That means, uh, in, in those type of softwares, this method will give you an error, and that's why it's a good practice to always go for try catch. In fact, your J, uh, Java itself will prompt you for this. So we have to use uh, try catch. And the exception it will throw is inter interrupted exception. We'll do the same thing. We'll use the same uh, code here also because I want it to be sleep for some time. And that's it. If I run this code now, uh, you will see we have hi hello, we have hi hello, we have hi hello, and we have hi hello. Now you think it's working properly. That means every time we execute the statement, we'll execute the same thing. Let's try it again. If I run this code now, you will see it's hi hello, hi hello. Now you can see we have hello hi. Now why we are getting this type of output is because it's all depend upon your scheduler. There is an equal chance that both the methods will arrive to the CPU at the same time. At that time, your scheduler of your OS comes into play, and it will it will use some some type of algorithm or some random number generation to call one of the threads. So if you call if you run this. Many, many times you will see uh, different different outputs, right? So this is how you can work with threads. This is how you can create threads. This is how you have to use run method. You have to use sleep method. In fact, we have different ways of writing threads that we'll see in subsequent tutorial. If you like this video, do subscribe and we have the like button there. Do like and if you have any doubts, please comment. Thanks for watching.